morning, everyone. Tammy Treyer, Treyer Wilderness and TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. Hope you guys are doing good this morning. Going to wait a little bit and see if we can get some other people on here. I am a few minutes late. I took a two-week hiatus and Facebook moved the live button to a new app, so I had to install that quick. <laughs> Hopefully this is on our page. I'm going to double check that. Like I said, I'm having to use a new app, so I don't know if it's working or not. There we go. Got somebody jump in here. Can you hear me okay? I can see people joining me. I'm not sure whom, but good morning. Hey, girlfriend. <laughs> I can see you. Good morning, Rachel. Can you hear me okay? And can you see me okay? All right, I am live on there. All right, we are good. Okay. Good morning, Tammy. I'll wait a little bit and see if we can get some other people on here. I've missed you guys. I hope you guys are all doing well. Are you enjoying this beautiful weather? We have had absolutely amazing weather out here. I am just loving this time of year. What is your favorite um, part of this season? This is this season in general is just my favorite. I love the whole thing. I love the weather. I love hunting. I love the the colors. Granted that it's nothing like back east, but it is uh, really pretty. And just the temperatures are so refreshing. Absolutely love it. And then you add the pumpkin spice and the pumpkin lattes and... Uh, smoothies and all that other good stuff so okay good glad you can hear me Tammy I wasn't sure I went to go live on the Facebook app and there's no longer a live button I was like okay so I had to search the apps and see if there was something new and of course there is so take two weeks off and right away they change everything on you <laughs> I thought I would start out in this direction today because I have something really awesome to show you guys. I am so excited and so proud to show you this stuff. Rachel says, I like not using air conditioning. That's about it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'm not an air conditioning person. It gets really hot and the mountain man minds it actually more than I do. But I just love this weather and you could just smell it coming in the cooler weather and the colors yeah and it's really weird here because we are surrounded by tall pines so there's not a lot that changes the larch um, or the tamarack trees actually their nettles turn bright yellow so they do change but that's all you see and then we have some um, cottonwoods here and there but they're really scattered in our area so they're not directly around us so what we see changing is the shrubs and the ferns and and that so it, it really um, is different but I still love it hunting and the weather anything fall yeah me too I just and I love layering I love layering I took my other layer off we just came back from a walk with the dogs so but I love being able to layer and just wear snuggly cozy clothes I don't know but I wanted to start this direction today to show you okay I got it there we go to show you my home. These are the walls that we have had for eight years. Um, you can see the uh, insulation. They've been studded out, but we were unable to get the cosmetic side of things finished. Uh, we basically got in here. Um, it was a big square open space with a wood stove and plywood floors when we moved in with the foot of snow on the ground and out of our canvas wall tent. The promise of the kids all coming home in the f in a few months, Rachel says. I understand and I know all the planning is going on. Mountain Ben is gearing up, so I imagine you're excited about that. But we we got in here and then we studded out the interior walls and everything. And we've had Tyvek walls, so it's kind of funny because our home at night is kind of like a Japanese home where you can see through the you know you can see shadows through the walls. So it's been pretty funny. Um, but for us, I grew up in a 200-year-old farmhouse that was constantly being worked on. I moved, my bedroom moved from room to room to room in the house as we moved around the house repairing and finishing things. So this is kind of just normal to me. And I mean, I don't like the dirt when you're, when you're trying to get things nice and then you've got all the dirt and the constant dirt. So having a strategic plan is good. But 
my guys have been busy milling lumber. You saw the lumber the last time I was on when the cats were attacking me. I showed you the lumber. And there's a huge pile of new lumber out here. Um, we, took, we took a staycation last week. And during that week, we milled extra lumber. But we got to the point where we had so much lumber, we didn't know what to do with it. So that's when we moved inside. And that's what I want to show you today. So you've been seeing me filming the other direction and filming my staircase. So I'm going to show you what has been accomplished and I'm going to try to do this. I'm on a new app and I'm going to try to do this without hiccups here. So bear with me. Okay. The wall behind the stairs was the Tyvek and insulation. And you can now see that it has lumber on it and it looks to me it's amazing. I am just so excited. There's the blues and these uh, white pines and white fir and uh, we used a couple different lumbers in here and this is another wall that I'm really excited about. That gives you the look of a log cabin. We put our darker lumber on the walls and used drywall mud to create the chinking. Um, I don't know if you can see it on there, but there's cracks in it because we put a really thick layer on there. And then what you do is you put a, a thin top layer on there and that will enable um, the cracks to be filled and a smooth uh, rustic surface to look to be there rather than the cracks. And then I'm going to step back here. We have a new beam in there. There's going to be a half wall behind the couch here. Um, that'll go into place and um, that's just half of the house so when we get over here as you can see um, the gable end will look very similar but there will be stone incorporated into this wall with the uh, wood stove and also um, over my uh, stove in the kitchen and the kitchen will also get finished I have makeshift counters that we've been using. So notice how you can be very creative. I have um, old tablecloths that men have had stains or holes in them somewhere utilized. You can't see the stains or holes because of how I'm using them. And this is just old painter's canvas that I had from another project um, on my previous farm. So utilizing things you have can really, really um, make things look super nice and and super rustic. That's my look. I've 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 got a uh, linen fetish a little bit, so my my doilies are used in different ways. My tablecloths are used in different ways, and I just want to show you this also. I showed you my cupboard the other week, and when I brought it in here, I didn't have anything in it. I have my baskets up top. Those are two graders. I do use them when I need them. I'll wash them and then use them. But underneath them is tea lights. And I'll light them at night and really makes it nice. The um, holes reflect off the walls. Same with this piece here. This has dragonflies on it. I found this at a thrift store. I love dragonflies. And that just uh, looks really neat on the walls also with the tea light burning in there. But I wanted to show you how I am utilizing this. So sorry for the movement. I hope I'm not making you all sick. But I'm starting to get my baskets that I'm using and my uh, pottery and my cast iron incorporated into this uh, cupboard because that's what I needed it for. And then down here, I need to repair this door. I have that door also. It's behind the cabinet, actually, and that needs to be repaired. And then I need to put new hardware on it. Um, I've got all kinds of old glass knobs that when I'm in thrift stores or yard sales that I collect and I'm going to put something on here. I also have some old metal handles um, from old furniture that I've gathered and uh, so I'm going to utilize those on this also. But I am just so odd. My house is so cozy and so you got this wonderful season. The fires are starting to be burnt and, and, and the f it's just so cozy and things are just starting to take shape. So whoever takes over our home will have such a beautiful, beautiful place to enjoy. And I'm so excited. The other thing I want to show you real quick is right here. 
I think you can see those. Those are huge, very long, probably 12 to 18 inch long spikes. I'm going to spin this around now. So there we go. Spikes that we found up in the mountains um, from the old logging flumes. And um, the mountain man was utilizing those to make some things on the forge, but um, he wasn't able to get it hard enough to make knives. So he decided to utilize those in those beams um, to use something of history from the area. So I thought that was really cool too. He's very creative. He's got an amazing mind an eye for things and it's just it's so cool so it's so really neat to see these things that have been in his head for eight years just transforming into our home so I'm really excited and uh, as things progress I will continue to show you because um, we are on a mission to get this inside finished so that we can uh, more aggressively sell our home so so um, and thank you I'm glad you guys like it and I will keep sharing that with you and um, learning skills and pursuing your dreams and um, not giving up on your dreams because sometimes when we have dreams people don't always agree with our dreams they don't understand them and it's really important that when you have something in your heart that you really pursue it and follow it um, I'm gonna share with you why I'm saying that first of all today's chat is about taking time away to get inspiration and I really truly believe that as a society that is something that is lacking we're all so busy and so worried about slowing down that things are gonna pile up and that things aren't gonna get done and we miss out on that quiet time that slow quiet time, that important quiet time that is to not only rejuvenate ourselves but to inspire us and to rebuild our faith in our own dreams. Um, I took the two, last two weeks off and I haven't been sharing a whole lot on Facebook um, uh, or on social media. Things have gotten so busy and I wear so many hats. I've been running my web design business and working um, with new clients. Um, I've been writing. I have an article coming out in the New Pioneer magazine. I help organize and do all the background work for Treyer Construction. So I organize the jobs, the materials, and permitting and all that stuff while they're doing the heavy stuff. So I w and, and then keeping up with the homestead and feeding them and getting wash washed and you know, um, there's just lots to do, always. Um, but I've really enjoyed taking um, time away because it really rejuvenated in me a lot of um, new inspiration and also um, confirmed my need um, to do what I do. I miss you guys. I missed you guys the last two weeks. And I really, um, you know, as I'm doing these other things, even when I'm washing dishes, I don't know if you guys take that time quietly. Um, if you rush through it, I mean, I don't have a dishwasher, so I'm it. Or we take turns sometimes. I can't, I can't claim it all. They help me out sometimes. But um, when I'm washing dishes and you're doing those mindless things, and you just take in the quiet, I don't know about you, but I have to stop a lot of the time and go and write things down because my mind just starts spinning in such an awesome way, and I get all this great information. Well. Two weeks ago, we were very blessed and treated to a week vacation um, at the lake with my in-laws and my sister-in-law and her family. And it was so awesome. It was so, so awesome. We have not really had a vacation. Um, not of that sort. Not of that nature. What we normally do is hit the woods for three, four days and just camp out. And, and don't get me wrong, that is an awesome time and we really enjoy it. Um, there was a lot of planning that goes into that and and we still you know have the quiet time and things but this was just really different because um, it was just something very unusual for us <laughs> um, the mountain man was actually going through the kitchen cabinets on day two because he didn't know what to do with himself um, but that quickly passed which was good I was a little concerned but um, he's not used to sitting still he's not used to sitting um, he's constantly in motion his mind is constantly moving 
And what was really awesome is during that time, we had the opportunity to spend a lot of t quality time together. Um, it also enabled us to have a lot of quiet time. And in our circumstances, um, I'm gonna be honest, um, the last two to three weeks heading up to that vacation were really grueling and really, really hard. Um, we've been working extremely hard this year, really trying to put a dent in things and make changes. And um, unfortunately, all of our great efforts are really doing, I mean, I, I shouldn't say unfortunately, our great efforts are producing really awesome things, but it's not producing financially what we needed to accomplish. So it has, and, and for any of you that have had financial struggles, it's really hard. Even though you're a positive person maybe, um, you still have the responsibility to pay things when they're due and just a lot of responsibility comes along with that. And it can be really hard and it was very hard for us. It was just one of those times where we're just really tired. We were really worn down. We work all day on jobs and then we come home and we work all night here. So there hasn't been a lot of downtime and there hasn't been a lot of quiet time. Um, it's just been pretty much go, go, go. So that week at the lake was just amazing. Um, I have to admit, I would have loved to go swimming, but I was really afraid to do so because of my body and my immune system and picking up things from the lake. However, I did go out kayaking with the mountain man and that was very awesome. I've never kayaked, so that was really, really fun. And we did a lot of fishing and game. We played a lot of games and we did a lot of walking. Um, the lake house was down in, so our walks were straight up, and so it worked a lot of different muscles than I'm normally used to working, which was fantastic. Um, as you know, I'm the crazy one that likes to exercise. So it was just a really good time. And um, another funny story, um, while on vacation, there was something in our bedroom. I don't know if it was mold or what it was, but it was making me sick. So um, the mountain man brought in... Um, the hammock frame from out in the yard and put it on the balcony outside of our bedroom and I actually slept in a hammock all week in Mountain Ben's nice new heavy-duty low-temperature sleeping bag so because it was getting really cool um, especially with the uh, lake maybe 25 to 50 yards away from the, the cabin itself so it was a little chilly in the mornings my nose was cold but it was really awesome so just Learning to improvise, learning to take the quiet time and really utilize the quiet time. How many of you guys have smartphones and you can't stop looking at it? There's got to be a bunch of you. I've, I've done it and I catch myself and I'm really paying attention to and I think that that's been pretty clear all year with living with intention and just paying attention to what we do in our time. I've paid attention to how I um, am attached to my phone that when I have quiet time I'm grabbing my phone to put music on or a podcast on or an audio book on instead of just ignoring all that and just taking in the quiet. Because honestly, guys, that is where it's at. That is where you will get your best inspiration. That is where you will regroup and get centered again and find your peace. Um, and I want to I wanna encourage you guys, um, too, that to, to do staycations. Um, a staycation is when you stay at your home, but you're on vacation. And so... You're doing things that may need to get done around the house that you normally can't get to, um, spending time doing things that you enjoy doing with each other. Uh, we did a lot of playing of games. My in-laws were here. My father-in-law helped us put this beautiful wall in. So it's just really awesome to be able to take that time and get the things done that may be nagging you and keeping you from your quiet time. Tammy says she's really been reducing her time on her phone. So have I. It's really, it's really important. You know, um, we look at our children and, and what our children could be doing differently rather than having their nose glued to a machine, but we don't realize sometimes that we're doing the same thing. And stepping away from everything, I can't tell you the inspiration I got. And also just the confirmation that I'm doing the right thing. Um, sometimes we're so busy and we have so wear so many hats 
that we are not um, doing the best we can do in, in all situations. And when you take that quiet time, even if it's doing dishes or going for a walk, um, like I've told you guys before, I do my devotions every morning. And um, over our staycation, um, I didn't get to them every morning like I would have because we had guests. And I really felt um, off center, if you will. So, you know, getting in routines and setting goals is really important. I am a free spirit. I like to be able to do my own thing. As I said, I've been self-employed since 1997 and being your own boss enables you to create your own schedule. Um, but I didn't always like setting goal, like a, a schedule of sorts because it felt too confining. But when you set schedules that are helpful to your well-being, such as you know, doing your devotions every morning. Um, it's your non-negotiable things that you want to hang on to. And um, I'm sorry, I'm reading a note on my screen here. Oh, wow. Okay, I just found something out that I can do, so I'm really excited. Sorry for the duh moment there. But um, it mentioned, good morning, Chad. It mentioned that Chad is watching. And it said about bringing him on the camera that I can add him to this. So they have now changed it that I can add somebody to my video. So that's actually really cool because there are some people that I have been wanting to bring on my show and interview them and chat with them. So I may be bringing somebody um, really special on in the next couple weeks. I'm excited they've added that feature. Before you needed rather expensive software to be able to do that. So, okay, that's my excitement. Anyway, now... Um, I want to read something to you guys. I started, um, and I can thank Rachel for this. Um, she shared this book with Mountain Ben, and they were listening to it yesterday on an audio book, and I borrowed it from the library last night. Um, it's called um, Chasing the Lion, and the lion is your dreams. And this is uh, the Lion Chaser's Manifesto. Quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. Run to the roar. Set God-sized goals. Pursue God-given passions. Go after a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Stop pointing out problems. Become part of the solution. Stop repeating the past. Start creating the future. Face your fears. Fight for your dreams. Grab opportunity by the mane and don't let go. Live like today is the first day and last day of your life. Burn sinful bridges, blaze new trails, live for the applause of nail-scared hands. I'm sorry, nail-scarred hands. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. Dare to fail, dare to be different. Quit holding out, quit holding back, quit running away. Chase the lion. Like I said, it's the time away was really good for us because we were wore out, we were tired, we were burned out, we were questioning our purpose, we were questioning our dreams, and um, that's what happens when we don't take enough time or we're forced to have to push really hard through things that sometimes we lose face. And I just wanted to take the time to get on here today, show you my beautiful home that I'm so proud of. And it just is, feels so amazing. And Rachel, and all of you actually, I wish you could come and join me around my table for a cup of tea. Um, but just take the time to slow down. You know, I've learned it several times in my life that in a day's time, everything can change. And in that time in my life, I also learned what was most important. And like I said, sometimes we're worried that the dishes are going to pile up or the wash is going to pile up or whatever. The house might be a little dirty. Um, the yard might need mode for you guys. The car might need some wrenching. But those things can wait. And you got to really focus on what's most important. And that may be you at the time. That may be your family. Um, but by taking time, you get a clearer picture of what your purpose is, what your needs are, what your personal needs are. Um, maybe you might even see some things that you've been slacking on that, and, and things. Um, as I told you before, I'm, I'm still 
purging. And that in and of itself has been amazing. And that's part why my house feels so cozy because there's just not stuff piled up in places and things laying around. I, I really like it when you don't have that extra baggage. It really is heavy baggage that you don't realize is there. But while I was out in the shed, my younger self was talking to me. You always hear about what would you say, what would, what would you, if you could say something to your younger self, what would it be? You never hear the reverse of that. And I thought it was just so ironic and funny that my younger self was talking to me and that I had found this uh, book that I've been sharing with you, uh, Gentle Hugs for Hurting Hearts, which is a woman with an autoimmune disease um, that is sharing her journey and inspiring. You know, I don't even know where that book came from, but my younger self had it. <laughs> and and the quotes and the different things that my younger self was um, enjoying and left for my older self to see. You know, um, we learn lessons as we go, but sometimes we miss or bypass those lessons or forget about them and just keep pushing and trudging on. But the thing is, guys, in, in all reality, you know, we've had a really interesting year, one that has been really eye-opening, one that has made us do a lot of soul-searching, one that has really taken us to our knees. Um, but at the same time, there have been so many powerful lessons and so many amazing blessings and so many things to gain from it. But the thing is, one of the biggest lessons I've learned is to slow down and to be in the quiet. And, and to set goals and to set your dreams and not to be afraid of your dreams because even now as we're dreaming for our next um, adventure, you know, we talk to people about what we're going to build and um, we are planning to build a 20 by 20, a two-story structure and that has even been contemplated to be a 15 by 15 um, structure and people can't understand... Um, why we would want to do that. But people can understand why we wanted to do this either. And I have no regrets, nor does the mountain man, because you know, through this process, we've learned a lot of things. Um, we might be struggling now because of my medical bills and, and that, but really, you know, as we go through our struggles, we strengthen, we learn, or hopefully we learn. And you know, life is what we make it. You hear me inspiring and sharing this stuff a lot, but it's on my heart and I just want to see you guys not be afraid to embrace your dreams and not listen to the mainstream crowd when you're, when you have an, a really radical dream that you want to embrace and, and they don't get it. So the thing is, is you got to focus on you. You got to focus on your quiet time. You got to focus on what is good for you and your family and, and just learn learn to do um, what gives you happiness and joy. And that all stems back to January of living with intention. So, you know, as, as we progress through the year, which is absolutely flying, I can't believe we're going to head into October, although I am excited because hunting season is right around the corner, and uh, I'm going to get out my bow. I think I said that last two weeks ago, and I didn't get it out yet but I am getting it out and going to hopefully utilize that in our um, any weapon season uh, this year to either get my elk or my deer. So anyway, what are, how do you guys feel about dreams and how do you guys feel about your quiet time? And what have you learned or recognized from taking time and, and being in the quiet? I would love your feedback. Share something with me. I would love to know and, and get your feedback because it's interesting to know how everybody, where everybody gets their inspiration from. Some people get their inspiration from the noise. I, I personally just get overwhelmed in the quiet and uh, just get amazing ideas. I've Over this year, my ideas have spurred a lot also in my devotional time and that's because I'm spending that quiet time with God and allowing him to speak to me, which for me is really important. Also, for those of you that are interested in checking out Chase 
Chase the Lion. Um, you can find the link below um, in the description. It is uh, treyerwilderness.com slash chasing the lion. So what are some things you guys have been doing to prepare for this season, for your winter, uh, for your hunting season? The last month of hospital stays and needing to be still has confirmed the need for me to do the quiet times more faithfully again. I imagine so. I imagine so. Yes, Rachel was in the hospital t two different times for fairly lengthy times. Um, and that's, yeah, some, and you know what? Like when I was going through right after my surgery and I was flat on my back and I'm sure it was for you too. Being in that position is hard. However, it teaches us things. And, um, Tammy says my quiet time is at the clothesline. I get that. I totally get that. Focusing on figuring out my dreams. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it can be really hard. We don't know our purpose. We don't know. I mean, I can relate to that, Rachel, because, when when the mountain man and I were so disheveled the three weeks prior to our vacation, you know, it, you just can't get a handle on, especially with our position that we're in. Um, it's really grueling. It's very heavy weights, um, very hard. Um, you know, we are positive thinking people, and thankfully we keep each other up. But it's it's hard stuff. It's really really hard stuff. And you know, you lose you lose face. You lose. You, you don't even know what you're, you're, you're seeking or what you're dreaming or what, what, you know, you can't think past your circumstances sometimes. And I think that's where the quiet takes us. The quiet takes us out of those circumstances and into a different place. And truly, guys, pulling into God for me is something that is awing and breathtaking at times because um, I get a lot of clarity there. Um, the Holy Spirit really uh, works me over in, in the quiet time. And I want to encourage you guys to really seek that quiet time. It is just, it is just priceless. But the thing is, most of us are worried about getting things done and accomplishing things and aren't willing to take the, the time necessary, even if it's 15 minutes of quiet time a day, um, it can really, really um, make a difference. And there's a lot of apps out there also. Um, one of them that comes to mind is Head, it's Headspace um, with Andrew is the uh, fella's name that created it. And he walks you through varying meditations. And that is a great thing to do. You can set it to do it for two minutes, for five minutes, for 15 minutes. But even if, if you have a hard time learning how to get into your quiet time, I would recommend doing one of the meditations. Um, I believe Headspace has a free side to it still. And uh, um, do the meditation, which kind of brings your body to a more calm and receptive place, and then enjoy your quiet. Um, just my thoughts. I also, my, my best time and my best quiet is like Tammy said, out the wash line or outside. Um, my walks, uh, when I take them by myself are very, uh, rejuvenating and enable me to really, uh, embrace that quiet time. So guys, I'm going to be back religiously every Wednesday at 1030. Um, Pacific Standard Time. So come and join me. Share uh, Treyer Wilderness um, with your friends, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. Um, these videos that I do here on Facebook Live end up on YouTube. Um, also, for those of you that are on YouTube and watching, um, join me here on, on Facebook Live. If you're not on Facebook Live, I am considering actually doing a live video on YouTube or trying to, to um, broadcasts on both simultaneously. So we'll see how that works with my internet connection. But guys, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for us all and uh, let you get back to your day. Dear Jesus, I just come to you this morning um, with these beautiful friends that have joined me and this beautiful day and just ask that you put it on their hearts to embrace the quiet more frequently and more often and to gain their peace and their joy back through the quiet, also to gain their purpose and their dreams, and just to have a clear picture of what their future looks like, what their days look like, you know, even what their minutes look like, depending on their circumstances, Lord. And I just ask that you 
uh, keep your hand of safety and healing on uh, all these people watching in our audience and just uh, bless them and help them in their day-to-day -day walk. And Lord, I ask that you strengthen them for their daily walk and just uh, give them peace and guidance throughout their days. And Lord, just be with those that are in need of prayer and, and your hand. Uh, be with Pat and uh, be with Rachel also in her continued healing. And uh, Lord, just be with everyone present today. Love on them. Wrap your loving arms around them. Let them feel your presence and just guide us through our week. And Lord, we just thank you more than anything for what you're going to do in our lives because you work miracles every day if we're willing to keep our eyes open and see them. So Lord, I just ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys, I thank you for your time, for joining me. And... Um, Stay tuned. We may have guests on here. I'm excited about that. I don't know how that's going to go with my internet connection either, but we're going to try it. Um, so, uh, also, check out the book, Chasing the Lion. It is, I, I read the chapter four last night, and awesome, awesome, awesome. Very empowering book. So, thank you, Rachel, for nudging that in our direction. And, guys, have a great day. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy your family. And go get some quiet time. Love you all. See you next week. God bless.